Okay, welcome back to GA Fan TV. My name is Aaron. I'm joined here by 2010 and 2011 uh, All Star Galway Camogie player Ashlyn Connolly to preview this weekend's All Ireland uh, Camogie final between Galway and Kilkenny. Um, I suppose, first of all, Ashlyn, uh, I suppose, how are you doing? And I suppose, uh, I mean, 2020 has been a mad year, but what have you made of, of the championship so far? And I suppose, uh, I suppose, yeah, everything that's taken place in general. It has been a mad year, Aaron, and uh, thanks for having me on today to talk about something that I'm very passionate about, women's sport and Kamogi in particular. Um, it has been a mad year, but aren't we so lucky that we at least have matches that we can tune into and watch and have something to look forward to at the weekends and have something different to talk about as opposed to COVID um, and the numbers and um, the positivity rate and all that. So um, I think it's brilliant that we're able to be able to have access to these matches at the weekends. Mm. And I suppose obviously normally for yourself, like you'd if you weren't playing in a All Ireland final, I suppose you'd be at least, you know, maybe at the game or you'd be watching it, I don't know, in the pub or with close friends and family. So I suppose would it be in 2020, like what's the excitement like going into into this final, I suppose, compared to, to previous years? Yeah, and it's different, you know, like the there's nothing normally there's nothing like championship week and you know, from a player point of view, you know, the and um, the buzz around the match and meeting people and you know, having um, kind of a media night and a press night in the lead up two weeks or a week before the final. But you know, none of that happens now. Um I don't even know how they're going to celebrate if they are going to celebrate. There'll be there'll be no homecoming, there'll be no family at the matches there'll be no um partners even allowed you know gathering afterwards um because of the situation that we're in so um it's completely different and um the players are like i think galway and kilkenny are both used to the hype and they're both used to playing in crow park so I think whether there was crowds there, 30, 35, 40,000, or whether there's no crowds, it's not going to impact the players too much. Whereas on the Hurland side of it, I think it's actually advantageous to Waterford this weekend because they're not used to playing in Crow Park in front of thousands of people. I know, or, you know, I know they were there in 2017 against Galway, but I think the younger players on that team will benefit from the lack of hype and the tickets bonanza that happens um, and I think that's actually an advantage to them going into the final against Limerick at the weekend whereas on the Camogie side I think both teams are you know it's Kilkenny's fifth All-Ireland final appearance in a row Galway were there last year All-Ireland Championships they, they, they're they used to the hype and the profile that All-Ireland final brings so I think both teams going into the final they're not going to care about that there's no one in the stands they just want to um, get out there on the field and you know both of them go after what they're both looking for and that's the Ojofi Cup and whether it's a, a full house or there's no one there that's not going to bother them too much mm, Absolutely and I suppose like obviously this you know go away side I suppose getting over the line last year as well as 2013 of course as well I suppose you know I was having a look through it there and I don't think all we've ever won a back-to-back -to -back Camogie uh, All-Ireland title so I suppose is there a bit more like added expectation maybe going into this final, do you think, compared to previous years? Or would you consider this maybe just the business as usual, I suppose, same as any other final? Um, I think it's going to be very interesting. Um, no, go, we haven't won back to back before um, and we haven't won too many um, over the recent years, um, three of the last 20 years or so. Um, whereas, as I said, like um, Kilkenny have been in the last five All-Irelands um, having only won one um, in 2016. Um, they've lost three All-Ireland finals. So they are going to bring that, you know, that hunger and that hurt, which is a major driving force into the match. Whereas Galway, um, you know, the nature of the being All-Ireland champions last year, it's theirs to lose. Um, you know, they will be favourites because they're winning the All-Ireland last year. But I certainly um, think it's going to be a huge battle because you have, you know, that hurt and that bitterness that Kilkenny will have from losing five 
all Ireland's, um, and also from the shakeup of the management, they've you know former Kilkenny hurlers, Brown, um, Brian Dowling, and you know um, Phelan, and you know they've a great new background team, and then Galway bringing their experience of last year. Um, you know, and their key players. I think it's going to be an absolutely brilliant game and very, very hard to call. Um, like they both, you could say, you could say Kilkenny had, they both topped their groups, first and foremost. You could say Kilkenny had an easier passage in that. They, you know, fairly kind of hammered Waterford, Westmead, Limerick, and then they had a, a, a battle against Cork, which they overcame and that will really stand for them. Galway had a slightly harder um, entry into the semi-final having played Wexford, Offaly and Cork and Tip gave them two um, tighter games um, so they're both coming into this having topped their group, they're both coming into this with um, uh, you know a desire to win the All-Ireland obviously um, and it's going to be a cracking game and I hope it's a cracking game because Camogie needs it and I hope that the new rules that have come into play where they're allowing, um, you know, they're kind of trying to align more with the hurling game, you know, no hand passes into the goals aren't allowed um, to be got by hand passing, there's allowed, they're allowed quicker hand, they're allowed quicker puck outs um, and there's allowed minimal contact which allows for a bit of physicality. So I'm hoping the ref will let the game go and if it's let go, it'll showcase the skill of these amazing athletes and it'll make for a more exciting game. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a brilliant game. It's going to be really hard to tell um, who's going to call it. If you look at Kilkenny, if we kind of zone in on Kilkenny first, their backs are absolutely ferocious. And I think it's their um, their strength. Um, when you look at Davina Tobin and Megan Farrell in particular, who held two amazing players from Cork, um, Amy O'Connor and um, Orla Cronin, scoreless from play in the semi-final, which is, you know, a, a brilliant feat in itself. You have Colette Dormer, who had a, um, had a brilliant game full back. You have Grace Walsh, who's um, a sister to Porrick and Tommy Walsh, the senior hurlers, and her cousin, Miriam, up front in, is a brilliant goal getter. Um, so they're tenacious. They're, they will put the Galway forwards under pressure because they are just, they hunt in packs. They've got brilliant man markers. Their support play is fantastic. Claire Phelan dominates number six and, and you know, just is a brilliant distributor of the ball. Um, and, you know, that there that's going to be a very interesting battle between the Galway forwards who are very fast and sharpshooters with the um, Kilkenny backs. Um, I think midfield is going to be an interesting partnership and battle. And I think potentially that will be where it'll be won and lost. Um, you've got, you know, Anne Dalton um, uh, midfield um, and then you've got the duo of Neve Kilkenny. I hope she starts midfield from Galway. She started wing forward the last day and that's not her, you know, best position, I would say. I would say that she would be better midfield and the better Neve Kilkenny plays, the better Galway in general plays. She's, you know, last year's All-Ireland player of the match, player of the year. She's absolutely an amazing athlete and, um, you know, they'll go up against... Um, as I said, Anne Dalton and Anna Farrell um, in midfield. And then, you know, you've got the the forwards of Galway who are like lightning fast. You've got Carrie Dolan, who is, you know, brilliant on the freeze. You've got Ailish O'Reilly, who's a goal threat. Um, and, you know, Orlam Gra who, from Sarsfields Club, who's back this year, wasn't there last year, a serious threat. And her sister Siobhan and Neve to come into the forwards there on the, on the panel as well, if, if, if they're under pressure, if they need, if needs be. So I think the, um, you know, the, the, the battle between the Kilkenny defence and the Galway sharpshooters and, you know, lightning fast forwards is going to be fascinating to see how, who wins that out. Um, so it's going to be a great match. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely going to be intriguing. All right. To see how it plays out, especially looking at the game last year as well, like Galway really came flying out of the traps and that kind of opening first half. And I suppose, will that be kind of a big worry maybe for Kilkenny kind of coming into this game? Do you think that maybe they'll have to watch that kind of opening first half period because certainly in the in the first game last year certainly Galway just came flying out of traps and in many ways it was almost it, you know Kilkenny had kind of a lot of work really to do didn't they kind of going into the into the second half then yeah so last year it was 314 to um 17 points and Galway got the three goals in the first half so you're right 
go away, you know, blast them, came out of the traps. Um, and you could argue, well, not argue, it's a fact that, you know, they were in Kilkenny against Cork in the semi final, went one, three down within the first eight to 10 minutes of the game. Um, and in particular in the second half as well, they were slow to start with Cork getting the first score. Um, and, you know, they went 21, 21 minutes without a score in the second half, Kilkenny against. Um, uh, Cork so it's absolutely something that Kilkenny will have to watch and I'm sure their manager Brian, D Brian Dowling is working on that they absolutely cannot afford to have a slow start to let Galway get the advantage start that they did last year um, because it'll be very it's very hard to come back from three goals in the first half to you know you're just always chasing the game always chasing the game then so yeah, they they can't afford to have a slow start. They will need to, you know, and I wouldn't be surprised if you find that that um, Kilkenny go for a few goal chances at the very start to try and get scores ticking over and to take their chances because, um, as I said, they just those periods where they go dark. It's kind of a, a trait now. We saw it last year. We saw it, you know, in the semi final um, for the first eight minutes, one, three down. Um, and then in the second half, they had a purple patch of like 21 minutes. So yeah, they they absolutely need to be all over that. And they can't give um, Galway that, you know, the likes of Ailish O'Reilly, um, Orla McGrath, Carrie Dolan, who got like one, three, uh, one, one, I think it was from play in the semi-final. Like they will attack um, and they will go for goals. So yeah, it's absolutely something that um, Kilkenny will need to look out for and oh and on the other hand of it it might be something that Gaul will, will exploit they know that you know they they have um success in starting off fast and you know they'll try and go for goals as well um and they have the players to do it um you know so that's one thing that i noticed about Galway over the last two years and um, the threat of Ailish O'Reilly in particular um and even Carrie Dolan coming more into form from play as the year goes on it's brilliant that um they're able you know they're, they're getting more goals which makes it more exciting for viewers and makes it a better um you know spectacle in general um which is which is you know great to promote the game in general mm. and i suppose like looking at this kilkenny team in general like obviously they've played and they're kind of coming into this in a weird position in many ways because they played in six of the last seven finals but have only won it once on, uh, yeah. on one of those occasions and I've obviously lost the last three in a row coming into it so I suppose do you think that will affect them a little bit coming in like obviously they have a couple of experienced heads in there but at the same time you know obviously losing four in a row that's something you definitely don't want to have on the on the record book so do you think that might affect them a bit coming into this game? I think it will I think you can obviously I think the, these players will um, you know bitterness and that hurt can you can channel that into really positive energy. And I think Brian Dowling will um, potentially focus in on that and also potentially focus in on the fact that last year was last year, bygones be bygones. We're just worried about this year. We've a new setup, we've a lot of new players. They're they're you know, they're missing the likes of you know Katie Power, Edwina Keane, Michelle Quilty, who are big losses. Um, but I think they will focus more on the game in hand, look forward, not look back. And, um, you know, it's but having been that player who lost two All-Ireland finals to Wexford by two points um, in Crow Park in the finals, it that hurt does drive you on. And what doesn't break you makes you stronger. And, um, you know, that experience, you know, they're not going to want to lose again um, and they know what it's like. Um, and they have that experience. Um, however, go, I don't care about that. Go, I don't care if they've won, if they, if Kilkenny have lost the last 10 in a row, they're out to prove a point. They want to go back to back. They want to um, win the game. And, you know, certainly they're, you know, they, they no hard feelings, but like all is fair is in love, love, all is fair in love and war. And, you know, Galway are going to um, just tackle this full on as our Kilkenny. Um, so, yeah, to answer your question, it's going to um, play a role in in players that were there, but they've got a new, they've got a few new players now that can, um, you know, step up and who can, um, you know, blend with the, you know, the 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 Dalton's who felt 
who've lost a lot, you know, um, they've got um, Tehan, um, you know, they've got experienced players who will bounce back. Grace Walsh has, uh, you know, is is a brilliant player there, cornerback. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it will be a factor, but they've got a nice blend of new blood. Kellyanne Doyle, for example, on the subs bench as is, is, is well, is good to come on. Um, Aoife Doyle hasn't been there for all of those losses. So, um, yeah, as I said, that hurt and that bitterness can be funneled into positive energy um, and they can use that as fuel and ammunition to uh, make sure it doesn't happen again. And I'm sure they'll want to right all those wrongs. Mm. And I suppose, like, what areas in that Kilkenny team do you think that Galway could even exploit maybe coming into this? Um, yeah. Like, obviously, you touched on a few of them there, but, like, what kind of... What ways do you think oh, we could really gain an advantage, I suppose, in this uh, in this final? So I think um, midfield potentially is an area that Galway could exploit. Um, Cork got five points from play from their midfield players in the semi-final. Um, and I think they can take long distance points. Um, I think their Galway can... Um, they can, like, I know the def- the defence for Kilkenny is fantastic, but the speed of A. O'Reilly and um, uh, Orla McGrath, I think if they get the right ball in, you know, low, fast, out into the corners, ball into them, that they should take on their players and um, go for goal. So I certainly think the midfield and the forwards will be able to... Um, take on the Kilkenny players. I also think our backs are very, very physical. And you've got Miriam Walsh and Aoife Doyle who've got, you know, who are brilliant players and very, very physical. And especially Miriam Walsh, who was very hard to stop. But that's matched by physicality um, and experience and support play from Galway's defence. You know, in particular, their full back line led by, you know, Sarah Dervin and then supported by Shawnee Healy, cornerback and, and Heather Cooney. Um, the other cornerback who's sister to, you know, um, Sheen and uh, Connor Cooney and the Galway hurling panel. So I think they will be able to um, look, they will be able to, you know, stop any goal threats coming through from the likes of Miriam, from the likes of Ann Dalton, from the likes of um, 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 Aoife Doyle. So I really do think it's going to be an interesting battle. I think Galway can exploit um, there they can play not exp- I wouldn't say it exploit but they can play to their strengths which is lightning pace up front um, very tight solid backs and then you know they're you know Neve Kilkenny and Aoife Dunn who if they're on form there's just no stopping them they're so fast they're attacking midfielders they can go forward um, and then you'll have the likes of uh, Sean Healy cornerback um, you know do you know doing some some man marking jobs so that's where I think Galway um, can exploit and ultimately I think it's going to be a battle I think it's going to be um, a serious game like Kilkenny have conceded are the team that have conceded the lowest amount from play in the championship and they ha- are the team that have scored the highest amount from play in this championship in saying that I think that um, it's going to be a game of you know, the leaders who stands up, so Kilkenny, like Anne Dalton, Denise Gall, Miriam Walsh versus, um, you know, Neve Kilkenny, as I said, if she goes well, Galway in general go very well, Ailish O'Reilly, um, Sarah Durvin. So I think if those, um, all those leaders step up, it's going to be a, a fascinating game. But I do think ultimately that Galway will win out because I think the midfield, they'll win the battle in the midfield, and um, I think they'll be able to nullify any threat from Miriam Walsh and Aoife Doyle, who scored seven goals between them in this championship. Um, that then um, with the scoring threat of Galway, Ailish O'Reilly in particular, Orla McGrath um, and, you know, Rebecca Henley, if we see the skill level that she showed um, in the semi-final, like having scored two sideline cuts from play, um, in the one game was just unbelievable. So they're able to score from the halfway line with their half forward line, um, and similarly in the full forward line. But it's going to be it's going to be a battle, and I don't think that it's going to be 
as one like three fourteen to seventeen points last year is is quite a significant. You know, Galway won quite comfortably, and they always looked like they were going to to win, having got the start. You talked about the three goals in the first half. I don't think that's going to be the case this year. I think it's going to be a much tighter affair, and I think it's going to be um you know um one or two three points in at max. Hmm. So I suppose then, obviously, as a Galway woman, you're touch you're uh, tipping Galway to win it. Then or, I I would imagine. Yeah, I am tipping um, Galway to win it. Um, and, you know, yes, I'm Galway. Yes, I'm very proud. I know lots of the girls that have been played with them. Um, but I do really admire this Kilkenny team. And I think they've got some fantastic players. Um, and, you know, having known, knowing some of them, I know that they're a real close bunch um, and that they give so much to it. Um, no more than all the other teams but I do think Galway will win because I just think that the the midfield will dominate Galway and I think that um, our backs will be able to nullify their forwards and we've got the speed up front to get a few goals um, so I think Galway will will um, just about win it but it's going to be a ding-dong battle and you know it'll be interesting to see the freshness and the um you know the the some of the tactical changes that Brian Dowling and his background team um do um on on the day um and it's no surprise that the 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 Kilkenny's defense is being lauded so much and that they're the lowest um conceded team who have conceded from play because you know they have the experience of um Philly Larkin who's an ex Kilkenny defender um, and, you know, they have Tommy Shefflin, who is from, you know, Ballyhale and WIT and, you know, a brilliant um, background team person to have as well. But I just do think that Galway will have the slight event advantage for the the reasons that I aforementioned. Hmm. Yeah, I'll probably go with Galway as well. I think I think after getting over the line last year, I think they'll probably just have a bit too much for Kilkenny. But yeah, definitely with the conditions, like that could be interesting as well. Like you never really know with the winter weather and as yeah. well, like what's gonna what like how, how that might affect the game. But yeah, I probably have to uh, to go for Galway as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I said I'd wear a bit of maroon today to uh... <laughs> represent. <laughs> I know, no, I'm supposed to be objective. I'm ob- I'm objective, but no, my heart is, is is leaning towards the girls. Obviously, um, it would be um unusual not to to be you know one sided when you're when you're so passionate and haven't played with some of the girls. Um, but I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it's going to be interesting. Like it's a, it's it's a seven p.m. throw in Saturday evening. Um, interesting time. Um, so it's going to be fascinating and I really do hope that it's a it's a good game and that it the referee lets it go um you know because that it's a, these girls are serious athletes you know all 30 of them playing and, and, and the girls on the bench and put in a savage amount of work they're you know in the prime of their fitness and if they're allowed to demonstrate their skill and their ability and their athleticism um you know by kind of letting it go and not blowing up for freeze you know, it, it's going to make for a brilliant match and a brilliant spectacle. And, you know, people who are potentially neutral will enjoy it as well, which is brilliant for promoting the game. Perfect, Ashlyn. Well, look, listen, best of luck anyway for Saturday. And uh, yeah, I appreciate your time and I appreciate you coming on to, to preview the final. Yeah, of course. Thanks a million, Aaron. <laughs>